garden was founded in 1939 by a group of concerned residents here in the desert who loved the desert and particularly loved the flora of the desert and they were getting very concerned by the development that they saw happening around the valley at that time in the most local sense right here in our garden where I'm standing we're doing conservation thinking a little bit outside of our garden walls our researchers and conservationists have projects and collaborations throughout North America into Central America, Mexico, South America, and even in South Africa. Our most recent project, if you will, that we're embarking on is as the host institute for the Cactus and Succulent Specialist Group. Now this group is part of the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, which is the world's oldest and largest environmental organization. So the IUCN uh, Red List, so the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, puts together a, li a red list of, of threatened species throughout the world. And um, this list is, is heavily utilized by those interested in trying to conserve the biodiversity on the face of the planet. Based on a, an evaluation of the family Cactaceae, which consists of between 1,400 and 1,800 species, we uh, put together an evaluation of each one of those species, trying to determine their conservation status. And what we found, which was really surprising, is they are the fifth most uh, endangered group of organisms on the planet. So they're actually number five, uh, the first four being cycads, conifers, amphibians, and corals. The Arizona hedgehog cactus was listed in 1979, and it was among the first plants listed under the Federal Endangered Species Act in Arizona. The Arizona hedgehog cactus is, is an important species, uh, a flagship species for conservation here in the desert because it occupies uh, a habitat that is under so many different demands for development and for mining. Conservation genetics is one of the tools within conservation biology that we can use to understand more about rare, threatened, and endangered plants. So the first step of, of this particular conservation genetic study is that you uh, visit as many of these populations as you can and you collect from individual plants at each location. From each individual plant, we uh, need to take some sort of tissue. So that can be a stem tissue, floral tissue, and here we developed a method where you can uh, collect spines and you can use the spines or the other tissues that you've collected to extract DNA. So at, when we're at the population, we document uh, everything we can about that population and we make a permanent record of having visited there and having found the plants there. And that record is stored in the herbarium here at the Desert Botanical Garden. This is pressed flowers, uh, pressed stems, photos. Uh, once we have the, the samples that we've taken back in the lab, they've been dried in silica gel we use a commercially available kit. Uh, it's a number of steps that you take the material through. You add certain solutions, which isolate, break down cells, and isolate the DNA and remove unwanted molecules. And at the end, you end up with a clear solution that contains your DNA. This project, we're using microsatellites, and these are highly variable pieces of DNA that you find throughout the genetic material. And then once we have the vetted data, then we take that into our analyses programs uh, to, that will summarize diversity and differences. With the conservation genetic work that I'm doing, I really hope that that information can be incorporated into 
uh, the recovery plans that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is working on. For me, what I'm really interested in doing for the Arizona hedgehog cactus, sort of as a first step of uh, increasing our involvement in uh, rare plant populations, is to get citizen scientists involved in monitoring programs, uh, maybe in even locating and verifying that populations are still there, how many individuals are still in that population, what are we seeing for pollinators, and what are we seeing for flower and fruit production? Do you see seedlings coming up? I mean, these are things that dedicated and trained citizens can be a part of. A long-term vision that our institution has is to bring this plant into uh, development so that people could have this plant in their yard. They could be growing uh, these plants all over the valley or even a wider area, and that alone might help to uh, preserve this species into longevity. It is really a privilege to be part of a global community that is working towards the conservation and preservation of the entire diversity of life on the planet.